Hi darlings, welcome back to my YouTube channel and thank you so much for joining me for today's video. It is that time of year when we're starting to think about the one piece in our wardrobe which most of us invest the most in throughout pretty much the whole year and it is coat season. Here in the UK it has become very much colder in the past couple of days even. We've gone from temperatures in the 20 degrees Celsius down to the single figures so a lot of us are starting to think about the winter coat that's really going to see us through. So I thought today I would share with you my top five or so tips on buying the perfect winter coat and also I've had a lot of questions from you guys about my personal coat collection. So as you can see from the rail behind me I've pulled all of my coats together and I'm going to show you my coat collection. So I'm going to get straight stuck in to the tips because with the coat collection part of this video it could get quite long. So my first tip for buying your winter coat and of course this coat shouldn't just be for this winter it should be for many many winters to come, a lot of the coats that you're going to be seeing here are coats that are two, three, four years old and because I chose well to start with they still are perfect for now, for this year and for next year. So these tips will hopefully help you find those same kind of coats for your wardrobe. So with that in mind it is no surprise that my first tip and so predictable but it is to buy a quality coat. Personally I think it is so much better to buy one really good quality coat than buy 10 substandard coats over one or two or three years. Not only do you get what you pay for when it comes to warmth and style, but also you're not having to fill your wardrobe with coats that maybe after a few wears are not going to be looking their best. Maybe next year because you didn't quite invest in that quality and classic design, they're not going to be on trend next year. So investing in quality is something that means you'll get so much more wear out of your coat feels so much more comfortable and so much more fabulous when you do wear it. I am sure you guys already know it. In fact, I know that you already know it because one of the coats that I see you investing in time and time again, because I'm an analytics nerd and I love seeing which links you click on and which products you buy, is my Reese Lawson coat from last year. This is the coat in question. I don't think they've bought it out again this year, but if they have already, I'll link it down below because what Reese likes to do is bring back really popular design pieces year after year. If they haven't bought it back then I will leave something linked similar. But this is one of the coats that you guys invested the most in and it is superb quality. The outer shell of this is 100% wool so it's really warm, a really good material, a classic colour, a classic shape, very flattering and absolutely timeless. So well worth spending a few hundred pounds on instead of spending 80 pounds here and there a few times a year on those more affordable coats. Okay so of course I know that not everybody has a few hundred pounds to spare and actually the high street does have some very good pieces at more affordable price tags and quality doesn't always mean expensive. Just because something is from a high street retailer doesn't mean it's good quality. So I do have a couple of coats to show you that are new to my collection and that are still good quality, timeless, classic designs in neutral colours that I will wear time and time again year after year. Exhibit A is this one from River Island. This is very similar in design to the recent one that I just showed you, that beautiful classic camel colour which is such an easy to wear colour. It's nice to have something a little bit different to grey and black. I actually don't have any black coats. Black is not a colour that I wear a lot in my wardrobe. I'm much more of a light neutral kind of person so for me camel is a real neutral colour. Despite being more affordable this is still really good quality. You've got a great lining. The one thing I would say is that I'm quite tempted to actually change the buttons on this. I think that this brings down the quality a little bit but that's something that I can easily change. The one thing that could be a little bit improved with this coat is the fabric composition. It's actually acrylic and polyester and there are arguments for and against these unnatural fabrics. Personally I prefer wool, I think it keeps you a lot warmer and it looks a lot better but there are benefits to these less natural fabrics. They are man-made which means often they do have superior qualities. It won't be quite as warm so something like this just needs an extra layer or two, don't forget your thermal underneath but when it comes to design, when it comes to how it looks, this is a really beautiful, more affordable option under £100 on the high street. So I feel like I've kind of covered a couple of tips in my first tip when it comes to quality and leading on from that, so obviously I've already spoken about the fabric percentage, you want to look out for these more natural fabrics like wool and also be really wary of the percentage. Sometimes on the label, sometimes they have like a cover on them and it's showing off that it's got wool in there, check the percentage because sometimes actually like the River Island one it does have wool in there 
but it's only a very small percent. I think it's only 7% wool, which is better than nothing, but you want to be looking to coats that have more than 50% wool. Another one that I can show you that actually I just invested in very recently, so you will be seeing me wearing this a lot. A new one from Reese. It is kind of my this year's version of my Lawson coat that I still have been wearing this year. So this one I'll be wearing many years to come. Let me just show you because I'm so excited about my new baby. I haven't even taken the tags off yet. I actually unboxed this this morning. This one is from Reese and material wise, the, the outer shell is 100% wool. So this is gonna keep me so warm, so, so cozy. And it's a little bit more stylish and out there with the check print design, but still in neutral colors. So as well as quality of the coat, obviously you want to go for colors that are gonna go with a lot of your wardrobe and for your wardrobe in many years to come. This is me trying it on for the first time actually, I am in love. A slightly more masculine shape for me with padded shoulders, a very traditional lapel, button up, but then it is double breasted. Got the two buttons down there, all important pockets, and a really good length to keep me warm, perfect with the roll neck underneath. And as well as things like checking the percentage of the material, you also want to look at the details when it comes to choosing a quality coat. What do the buttons look like? Are they made of good quality material? Give them a bit of a tug, are they going to be falling off? Even look at the lining, have they scrimped on the lining? Is there a lining? If you live in a cold country then you're definitely going to want something lined because that is just another layer of warmth and look at the stitching look at the stitch detail has it been finished nicely has that extra detail on craftsmanship gone into your coat this is something that's going to be your outer layer it's going to be protecting you it's going to be shielding you from the elements so it needs to be well made so it lasts you a long long time my next tip when it comes to finding the perfect winter coat is to be patient I don't think you should rush into buying the first winter coat that you see it might be really on trend it might be the one that everyone's talking talking about from Zara or from Reese, but that doesn't mean you should buy it. Be patient because this is the kind of thing that in your wardrobe you are going to be getting so much wear out of. A coat, if you live in a cold country, is the ultimate price per wear piece. So just take a step back, order a few, try on a few on the high street, but don't feel pressured into buying one if it's not the exact perfect one for you. My next few tips are hopefully going to help you with finding that very perfect one for you. So it's all very well me saying know your body type and know which coat works for you. And actually, I don't think that there are any kind of cheat codes when it comes to body types and coat types. I don't think if you're shorter, you should go for a tie waist or if you're taller, you should go for a button up one. I actually think it really hugely varies from person to person. And the only way to find out what style of coat suits you is to go out there and try loads on and yes this does link into the last tip because you do have to be patient but I promise you it is so so worth it from years and years of trying on different coats I know that I don't suit a boxy shape I know that I just can't I just can't get away with wearing blazers whether it's that I've got slightly broader than average shoulders and I am quite short you guys ask me on my height so much I think I'm around 5'2 but I'm not entirely sure but the reality is go out shopping put on a thermal put on a chunky knit and also maybe have another jumper with you because there's nothing worse than feeling like a stuffed sausage when you do want to layer up with your coat so upsize a tiny bit so that you have got room for all those snuggly layers and just try loads on if you want to enhance a feminine silhouette then go for a coat with a tie waist you can really pull it in highlight that feminine silhouette and you'll always feel girly and feminine when you're wearing it I also think of this style of coat very much like a dressing gown I find them so comfy and cozy I will have a few examples of those to show you in a few moments that's just one style if your style is slightly smarter if you're going to be wearing this coat mostly to and from work to and from meetings then perhaps you're going to want something a little bit more structured perhaps a trench coat again it can have a tie in at the waist something double breasted those are really really smart designs have this in mind as well as the quality of your coat and don't rush into it I don't know how many times I can say it but really there are so many coats out there the right coat is just waiting for you to find it I've just switched on a lamp because it was getting very dark in this bedroom it is Sunday afternoon and it feels like the apocalypse it is so dark outside so my next tip is to prioritize warmth over fashion the main purpose of your coat is of course to keep you warm yes of course you want it to look stylish it is the first thing that people notice about your outfit because it is your outermost layer at this time of year but at the same time no one looks fashionable when they are absolutely freezing so make sure it has got a lining and has got a good fabric composition because warmth should be your absolute top priority when choosing a coat if you do feel the cold especially around your neck look 
look for a coat that's got a collar that you can pop because that again is a really great way of keeping the warmth in as opposed to something that's really open around the neckline. Some coats have got removable faux fur around the neck, that's a lovely snuggly finishing touch as well. But take all of these tips with a pinch of salt because if you do find a coat that you just feel absolutely fabulous in but maybe it is a tiny bit more open, not quite as warm, then you can just remember to wear your thermal, pair it with a nice snuggly scarf and you should be absolutely fine. <laughs> One more thing that you should keep in mind when looking for your perfect coat is actually it should have pockets. I think there is nothing worse on a really really cold afternoon when your hands are getting bitterly cold, so cold you can't even turn your phone on and you go to put your hands in your pockets and your coat doesn't have any. Personally it's just a rule that I will always stick by, coats absolutely have to have pockets especially if it's the one, the winter coat, you want it to have every design detail that's totally functional as well as fashionable and for me pockets is an absolute essential. So those are my tips when it comes to finding the perfect winter coat. Now I'm going to whiz through my personal coat collection. As you can see behind me it is all very neutral, that's because I've taken these tips into consideration when choosing these coats and I want my coats to be super versatile, I want them to go with all of my outfits, so neutral colours do exactly that. By opting for a colour that is going to go with everything, I'm not afraid to spend a little bit more money because it is going to be such a versatile piece in my wardrobe. So I'm going to start off with my newest coats because these are the ones that are more likely to be still in stock that you guys can invest in as well and I'll leave them all linked down below. So you've already seen my beautiful new one from Reese which I haven't even worn out the house yet but trust me, you'll be seeing me wearing this a lot. I absolutely love it. I thought that the check design was a little bit different and yet it's still so warm and still so classic. This for me is great because, as I mentioned, I did invest in the Camel Lawson last year. This is pretty much the exact same cut as that but in a slightly different pattern. So when I want to switch up the style but still get the same benefits of the Lawson coat, then this is absolutely perfect. Something that I actually picked up before the temperatures dropped was this one from River Island. This is a suede trench coat. This I can still get away with when the temperatures are cold if I do have a thermal on. In fact, I have a couple of outfit clips that I can insert here. You'd never know it, but I actually had a thermal long sleeve top, thermal tights on, and thermal socks, but because I was wearing a long sleeve dress, you really couldn't see it. In that instance, a coat like this that maybe isn't wool and doesn't have a lining is still perfect. This is more of a fashion coat, but again, because it is so neutral and a classic design, it is something that I can still get wear out of year after year. This next coat you guys might recognise if you were following me last year. This was so kindly gifted to me on a press trip with Kate Spade. It is a Kate Spade coat, really good quality. It's beautifully lined inside, so warm. It was absolutely freezing in New York when I was wearing this, but I was so grateful to the brand for gifting it and just to have it because it was so bitterly cold. The faux fur around around the neckline just made it so snuggly. Even the length of it, I think that if something goes around your thighs that really helps to keep you warm as opposed to a shorter coat, you'll notice that most of mine are either mid-thigh or knee length. And it has pockets and lovely details on the buttons which just add to that, that beautiful top quality finish. So I've already spoken to you briefly about this River Island one, one from the high street that is really good for this time of year before it gets bitterly, bitterly cold. It does have pockets which actually I haven't unstitched yet, that's another tip when you do get a new coat make sure to unstitch the pockets and also this one actually doesn't but many coats come with a slit at the bottom I see so many people walking around on the tube and they've still got the crisscross of fabric in fact my Reese coat has still got it so I can show you a real life example when you get a new coat often they have a bit of stitching on the opening bit I think it's called a vent um, this is meant to be unstitched I see so many people walking around with their coat still stitched up this is purely so it doesn't get creased and all messed up on the shop floor and when it's being posted to you or when you're or when the retailer is packaging it up just take a pair of scissors and undo this stitching open up your vent because it is meant to be opened. <laughs> Next up is a coat that I invested in two winters ago, another real classic, it is this grey trench coat style from Karen Millen. This has so many design details that I love, it's got a big wide lapel, it is double breasted and it's got a tie at the waist, really big deep pockets, slightly structured shoulders, it's just an absolute classic. I can't even imagine this coming out of fashion in 30 or 40 years, you can imagine people wearing coats like this in the 50s, the material is super quality, totally timeless and something that 
that will be pretty much a forever piece in my wardrobe. So actually, we're talking about River Island quite a lot. Here's another one from River Island from last year. I think that is another of my go-to retailers when it comes to coats that are great quality, but do have a lower price tag. This one I did buy more as a fashion coat. I love the tie waist. I love the faux fur around the neckline. This, I always just felt so fabulous when I was wearing this last year. I was a little bit nervous to invest a lot of money in a white or very, very light colored coat because I like my coffee. I do like to drink things like beetroot juice, which are very dangerous. Now I have got my lovely Reese one in a light color, but last year when I was kind of playing around with the lighter color coat idea, this is the one that I went for and I'm very excited to wear it again this year. Along similar lines to my River Island coat is this one from Topshop. Again, very classic and neutral. This one has got a slightly smarter lapel. This would be a really great overcoat for more smart occasions like wearing to the office. Again, it's not going to be warm enough when it temp when those temperatures do hugely drop because it is unlined, but for early autumn and even in spring when the temperatures start to rise again, this is absolutely perfect. Possibly my favourite coat of all time, which again I've already mentioned, my Reese Lawson. This actually doesn't have a waist belt, but it does have this quite smart detail at the back here. It is probably my most loose fitting coat. On that note, many people do like to size up when it comes to coats because obviously you do want to have layers and knitwear and things like that underneath. I would say Reese already know that. So actually your size is still your size. If you normally wear a size six, if you're buying from Reese, still get a size six because they've actually already taken into consideration that you're probably going to be layering up underneath it. This one looks great with scarves layered underneath. I can even add a faux fur collar or a stole underneath it. And there's plenty of room for all of my chunky layers underneath. These next coats are kind of my more springtime coats, but then I have been wearing them this time of year for smarter occasions. Again, you might recognize a lot of these from earlier this year or last year. This one is again from Reese, a beautiful light color, almost silky. It's got a way band as well but I don't always wear that. This for me is more of an occasion coat. I wore this a couple of nights ago to go to the theatre. I knew I was just going to be going from the house to a taxi to the theatre so I didn't need to be too warm but definitely needed an extra layer and something like this, an occasion coat, is a very great piece to have in your wardrobe. This is most definitely a springtime coat. It is a light coloured trench, <laughs> again from Reese. I feel like they are just absolutely my go-to when it comes to um, coats and outerwear. This is pretty much much a typical trench style coat. You've got the folding lapels, the pointed lapel collar, double breasted and a tie around the waist, but it's in this beautiful pinky blush, almost gray color, perfect for my wardrobe. So a nice way of having a slightly more personal trench style. Same again, this is more of a spring coat, but if we do have any days when the sun does come out and it is slightly warmer during the winter, then I could wear this again with a chunky white roll neck. In fact, with what I'm wearing now, this could be a really nice smart coat, but typically I do usually wear this during the springtime. As you can see, this is a really relaxed shape. It doesn't have structured shoulders, almost like a cape or just like a really cozy throw on piece. But then you do have this tie waist if you want to add a little bit more detail to the silhouette. I have got a faux fur coat in my wardrobe as well. This one, I think it kind of looks a little bit like Dickens in that it's speckled, so it's very, very cute. It is nice and warm as well, layered, and faux fur is very warm. It is Majorelle via Revolve. It has got pockets as well when I just want to be super snuggly. In fact, I might wear this today. I'm going for a clothing charity sale after I finish filming this video. Um, so yeah, I think this one might be good for today when I just want to be super snuggly. It's a Sunday after all, going for nice long walks in the park with gloves and a nice coffee in my hands. It is absolutely perfect and still lovely and smart and still neutral colours too. I've also just remembered a coat which isn't here, so I need to find it. I might have even left it in dry cleaners. My Ted Baker one, I'll insert a picture here, which is like a red like a purpley and navy check print. I love that coat that I was very kindly gifted by the brand as part of a collaboration last year. Need to search for that one, but this is also in my coat collection. A coat which I get a lot of use out of and is super practical is this one from Ted Baker. I've had this for a couple of years, but they do have something very similar in the stores now that I will leave linked down below. It's padded, I think it is down padded, which just makes it so warm. It scrunches up into barely nothing, it weighs, barely anything and it's just so so comfortable. For me this is very much a walking the dog, just want to be super warm, going for long walks or nipping to the shops and yet still want to look stylish. It's got a waistband, lovely faux fur collar, zip up pockets you can put your change in or dog poo bags, things like that and you just don't really feel like you're wearing anything. It does feel very very lightweight, uncomfortable but it is so so warm. I have got a coat similar to this which is gold and actually goes down into a tiny little um, drawstring bag from Uniqlo. Those are also great 
for popping in the car, popping in your handbag if you just want to have an extra layer of warmth just in case. And last but not least, something I should have mentioned when I was talking about my new in coats, this is another beautiful one from Reese. This is the kind of cut and fit that I absolutely love. I call this a robe style coat. You might have seen this already on my Instagram a few times. This was a very early autumn investment for me. I love this colour and yet I didn't have a warm coat in this colour in my wardrobe but I could tell I'd get so much wear out of it. So just have your go-to colours in mind when you are spending an amount of money on your winter coat. If it's a colour that you don't have in your wardrobe or that you don't tend to wear, then chances are you're not going to find it fitting in with your wardrobe very well when it comes to your outerwear. But if there are colours that are your go-to colours that will work with everything else in your wardrobe, then you can be confident that you won't go far wrong investing a little bit more in that shade. So that is my winter coat collection and my top tips on choosing your winter coat. I would love to know if you've bought your winter coat for this season yet, which one you've gone for, if you've ever invested in any of these, and which is your favourite from my coat collection, just let me know down in the comments section down below. All of the coats mentioned will be linked, or ones from old years, I will try and find similar ones. But that is everything from me today, I hope you've had a fabulous Sunday, you've enjoyed the extra hour if you're watching from the UK and you're watching today. I've used my extra hour to film this video. But thank you so much for watching. Do give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. Subscribe for more if you haven't already and I'll see you very soon in my next one. Bye!